In our culture today, people typically grow up with a correct understanding of motion, simply because we live after the time of Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, the physicist, once he explained motion correctly, ever since then people have naturally thought about it correctly. And we live in a world in which motion is described in everyday terms. For example, you're familiar with the idea of miles per hour, and you recognize this miles per hour as representing a speed and you see speed limit signs along the road that say something like 55 miles per hour and you understand that miles is a measure of distance and hours is a measure of time and that makes sense to you and you understand that miles per hour 55 miles per hour means you go 55 miles in one hour this number tells you how many miles you go per hour. And you can see, if you recognize that the fraction bar there means division, you can see that we're taking distance and dividing it by time. And distance divided by time gives us speed. And this basically correct understanding of motion is part of our everyday experience. Now Aristotle didn't have ideas like that. His ideas about motion were completely different. And I'll go, I'll go over some of the ideas that he had in his head. And then I'll explain to you why it's important, why it's significant. His, in, even though his ideas are incorrect, I'll explain why it's very important. Okay, the first idea is natural place. Aristotle thought that the, the world, everything in the world, was made up of four things, four elements. And he would describe it like this. He would say there's earth, and then on top of the earth you would have water and then on top of the water you might have air and then on top of that you might have fire and he said everything is made of these or some combination of these things and everything according to Aristotle tended to go toward its natural place so a rock for example would be down here at the bottom. A rock is an earthy thing and rocks sink to the bottom of the water or water sits on top of the ocean floor, on top of the dirt and the, the rock on the bottom of the ocean floor. Air is on top of the water. Above the ocean or the lake or the river there's air and fire is on top of that. That's why according to Aristotle flames would leap upward or that's why the sun would be up in the sky. And Aristotle thought that things would move because they were seeking their natural place. So if you had the ground here and you were standing here and suppose you held a rock out and you dropped it, we understand today that the rock falls because Earth's gravity pulls it down. That's not what Aristotle thought. Aristotle thought that things naturally, things that were earthy or rocky naturally went down because Earth was down here at the bottom. And he said the rock would move down because it was seeking its natural place. He did not have this understanding of the force of gravity pulling it down. Another of Aristotle's ideas was the concept of impetus. If you throw something and make it move, Aristotle would say you imparted a certain impetus to it. And it would continue to move until that impetus was exhausted and then it would fall. So in Aristotle's mind, if you threw a rock, say you threw it in this direction, it would move in that direction until the impetus you gave it was gone and then it would fall down to earth. So the path that it would take through the air would look something like that. And that's obviously incorrect. If you've ever thrown anything, you know that it moves something like this. You throw it in an angle, it goes up, and then it comes down like this. And the path through the air is what we mathematically call a parabola. And that's how things actually behave. They don't behave according to this idea of impetus that Aristotle thought. Aristotle also talked about force and motion and his idea was this, you can write this down, he believed that a force is required a force is required to keep an object moving. Now this idea is not really unreasonable. If you have the floor here, say you have a box sitting on the floor, and you want to push it. So you come over and 
you push against the box. Well, that makes the box move. And when you stop pushing, the box stops moving. So it certainly seems like a force is required to keep the object moving. It's not that simple, though. What really stops the box is the friction between the box and the floor. It's scraping against the floor, and that friction slows it down. If there were no friction, if this were a really slick floor, then the box would continue to slide. It would continue to coast. But Aristotle thought the force would be required to keep it moving. That idea caused him to resort to some fairly odd explanations for things. For example, if you imagine an arrow being shot through the air. So here's an arrow, and it leaves the bow, and it's flying through the air in this direction. Well, as it goes through the air, the air has to spread out around it, like that. And Aristotle thought that what kept it moving was the air closing in behind here and pushing it. So he thought as the air in back here closed in around the back of the arrow, that it would push the arrow forward. That idea is completely wrong. But he thought that because he believed this, that a force was required to keep it moving. So he had to imagine some force, something happening right there to keep the arrow moving. And the last idea of Aristotle that we'll look at is the motion of the earth. And there are plenty of other ideas of Aristotle that we could discuss, but we'll just keep it simple here. According to Aristotle, there is no motion of the earth. In Aristotle's mind, the earth does not move. We understand today that the Earth moves around the Sun. The Earth and the other planets are orbiting the Sun. Aristotle thought the Earth was stationary and that everything was moving around the Earth. And this, again, this is not an unreasonable idea either. Because if you, if you watch the Sun over the course of the day, it rises and it moves across the sky and then it sets. And the Moon does the same thing. The Moon will rise and move across the sky and set. The stars do the same thing. You might not notice it, but if you watch the stars for several hours, you'll notice them rising and moving across the sky and setting. And it certainly looks like everything is moving around the Earth. So Aristotle wasn't, um, wasn't being foolish to think this. It certainly feels like the Earth is still, and it certainly looks like the Earth is still. So in Aristotle's world, the Earth was at the center of the universe, and everything was moving around it. And this is sometimes called the geocentric theory, or the geocentric system. This is an easy word to understand. Geo means Earth, like geology, the study of the, the physical planet Earth, and centric meaning center. So the geocentric idea, or the geocentric system, is the, the system of the world, the system of the world that has the Earth at the center and everything going around it. And here's a little animation showing that. You see the Earth at the center, and then closest to the Earth is the Moon going around, and then you see Mercury, Mercury and Venus, and then there's the Sun, the third one, the yellow one, moving around. All the planets are moving around the Earth, and at different speeds. You see Saturn out there on the outer edge with the rings over on the right at the moment. This is Aristotle's view of the world, and it's not correct.